fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll still live. Oh! Sheriff Judd Pender sat at his desk in his office and looked across at the slim figure of his 22-year-old son, Jack. The young man shifted uneasily under the steady gaze of his father. Then he blurted out hurriedly, Look, Dad, I don't want to be a deputy. You keep saying you want me to be a lawman like you, but, well, I don't plan to be one. I, I reckon I'm just not cut out for it. Why, Thunder, I never thought a son of mine would turn out to be like you. I've taught you to ride and shoot as well as most any other hombre, hoping that someday you'd follow in my footsteps. Dad, I don't like the idea of hunting other hombres like you'd hunt coyotes or wolves. I I just want to mind my own business. Maybe own a ranch someday and settle down with a family. Nothing prevents a sheriff from owning a ranch, son. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to get married and then have my wife worrying all the time. Like I've watched Mom worry over you every time you want to trail some lawbreaker. Women are going to worry about the men, folks, no matter what. And as for what you said about hunting other hombres like they were coyotes or wolves, well, let me tell you, lots of humans are far worse than prowling animals. That's something I reckon you still have to learn. No, it's no use, Dad. I've been offered a job as a line writer at the Bar K spread, and I'm going out there tomorrow and take it. I, I'm sorry I can't see things your way, Dad, but I, I just don't want to be a manhunter. Well, that's that. Somebody has to keep law and order, or the hombres you refuse to hunt will make it so tough that neither you nor anybody else will be able to ever have any ranching. Well, I'm going to get some coffee. Someday, son, maybe you'll feel different about being a lawman. Meantime, go ahead and be a nursemaid to the Bar K Longhorns if you have a mind to. In the days that followed, the territory was overrun by an outlaw gang headed by a vicious leader, Juan Revilla. Juan's reputation had preceded him. Revilla is wanted for murder in Arizona. Yeah, they say he's plenty tough. He and his gang are getting bolder, too. (laughs) 
One had been the topic of conversation in the cafe in Red Bank for a couple of weeks. An express stage had been held up and the driver killed. The bank in town had been robbed in broad daylight and cattle were being rustled from nearby ranches. Sheriff Judd Pender, weary from lack of sleep, sat at breakfast one morning. His wife was saying, Judd, why don't you rest today? You and the posse have been on the go for two weeks. Lucy, it's my job to keep going until Juan Revere and his gang are behind bars. They continue to get away with their crimes. Other outlaws will consider this territory easy picking. Move in. Revere is a dangerous man, Judd. All the more reason why he has to be caught. But I worry about you when you're out after him. Well, something might happen to you and... Sure. Something might happen right here, too. <laughs> I might fall down some steps and break my neck. It's that infernal worrying of yours, Lucy, that's turned my boy against being a lawman. Jack is different than you, Judd. The boy's more tender-hearted. Tender-hearted? Ah! If he wasn't my son and I didn't know better, I'd say he was chicken-hearted. Why, that boy's one of the best shots in the county, yet he refused to be a deputy. Puts in his time riding herd on a lot of moth-eaten cattle. Any lazy drifter could hold a job like that. Well, I've got to go and tack up some picture posters on that no-good revere. Uh, Judd, if you see Jack in town, be sure to tell him to drop in and see me. Yes, I'll tell him if I see him. I reckon he's got plenty of spare time to sit around and visit while I take out a posse to hunt one revere. Jack did go to town that morning. He stood in the general store waiting while a stalwart Indian finished purchasing a few supplies at the counter. Uh, no... There's not anything more. Then, all right. I reckon everything you asked for is there ready to go. Hey, what's your name, Indian? I haven't seen you around here before. Uh, me, Tonto. Me not live near. Me have camp with friend in hills for a few days. Oh, uh, that comes to eight dollars fifty cents. There's your money. Eight fifty out of a ten dollar gold piece. While the storekeeper made change, Jack turned and looked out the window. He could see his father, the sheriff, tacking up a big poster in front of the jail across the street. Even at that distance, Jack could make out the big black letters across the top. Wanted, dead or alive, Juan Revere. Jack was about to turn back to the counter when it happened. As Jack watched for less than a minute, a gang of outlaws had ridden unexpectedly from between the buildings across the street, directing gunfire at the sheriff as they raced onward, disappearing on the trail out of town. Outlaws! They shot Dad! Uh, let's get over there! Come on! Let me through! Let me get through, please! It's the sheriff's son! Revere and his gang did it, Jack. They came from between the buildings there. Dad. Dad, are you hurt bad? Jack. Jack, son. Juan Revere, he... He did it. Get a doctor, somebody, quick. Yeah, no. Right, oh, it's no use. I, I'm done for. My... My bad son. Unpin it. Give it to me. Yes, Dad. Here it is. Dad, you... You'll be all right. Say you'll be all right. Ben... And close, son. There. My badge. I, I pinned it on you. Promise? Promise to wear it till you bring in. Yeah. Oh, no. Please, Dad. I, I, I... I'm going fast, son. Make me happy if... I knew you'd... All right, Dad. All right, I promise. Good. I... I knew you'd do it for... for my sake. Tell... tell your mother I... Dad. Dad. Help me get him to a doctor. He's fainted. No. 
Oh, it's too late for doctor. No. Him go to happy hunting ground. No. Dead. Oh, dead. Tonto left town and went to the camp which he and the Lone Ranger shared in the nearby hills. The Indian told his masked friend what had happened. When he had finished, the Lone Ranger spoke. Tonto, Jack Pender will need help to catch Juan Revilla and his gang. Ah, me hear people in town talk. Them say young fella not want be lawman. Him not like hunt men. Oh? Them say sheriff try to make him deputy. But Jack say him not be lawman. Him get job on, on ranch. I see. Daddy promised his father to wear the sheriff's badge until he caught Revere. Not right. It took courage to make such a promise since he feels as he does. Not right. I wonder if he'll keep his promise. Well, me not know. Them very sheriff late today. After that, maybe sheriff's son try catch outlaws. We'll go to town later, Toto. I'd like to know just what Jack Pender will do. It was sundown when the last bit of dirt was put into place and a crude wooden cross stuck at one end of the sheriff's grave. The silent crowd slowly moved away as Jack led his mother to a buggy in which a neighbor woman was waiting. The two women drove away. Then Jack, alone, walked back and stood beside his father's grave. He stood silently for a moment. Then, falling to his knees, he spoke brokenly. Oh, Dad. Dad, why did you make me promise? I can't go out out in a human being. I can't. Jack didn't see the two figures who moved from a nearby grove and finally stood behind him. He looked up quickly as he heard the Lone Ranger's voice saying, Your father was a fine man, Jack. Those he hunted were worse than vicious animals. You... You're one of Revere's gang. That man. No, we're not outlaws, Jack. Your father knew us as friends. Todd and I came here to help him. We were too late. But we shall be able to help you if you want us to. That Indian. He was there when. when it happened. Isn't that right? We're sorry about your father. One Revere is wanted for other killings. He must be caught and punished for his crime. I suppose you like to hunt men and shoot them down? No, Jack. I use my guns only for protection, never to take a life. A good lawman lets the law take its course, even with a man like Revere. But I thought a sheriff A had... sheriff like any other has the right to take a life, if necessary, to save his own. But wounding an outlaw can be just as effective. Ah. Lone Ranger help catch plenty outlaw. Him never kill anyone. Why, you... You're the Lone Ranger? That's right. I've heard Dad speak of you. What, uh, what are you going to do, Jack? I mean about the promise you made to your father. I'll keep my promise if... If I'm able to count on your help. Of course. Ah, we help. I don't know where to start, though. Folks in town know Dad pinned his badge on me and that I made that promise. They'll expect me to do something right away. Jack, I suggest you go back to town and get a posse ready to ride. By that time, Tonto will bring you word from me. Well, what are you going to do? Tonto and I will pick up the outlaw's trail. The ground is soft and their tracks should show plainly. Ah. Moon be plenty bright tonight. We not have to wait till dawn. All right. I'll go back and get the men together like you said. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Meantime, in a hideout shack in a secluded hollow, Juan Revere was talking to two of his men, Jess and Sparky. <laughs> so we have make much excitement in Red Bank, eh, Jess? That's right. I eased into town this afternoon and found out the sheriff died from our bullets. Yeah, and Jess says he heard that before he died, he pinned his badge onto his son's vest and made him promise to track us down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Seems the sheriff's son don't like to hunt humans, or rather outlaws, but he promised to try to find us anyhow. So? That is most interesting, no? <laughs> we ought to be hunted by a young hombre who was afraid of outlaws. I'm not so sure about that. From what I heard at the cafe, he just don't like to hunt humans. His old man tried to get him to be a lawman, but he took a job on a ranch instead. Perhaps that sheriff's son will give up the idea of hunting for Juan Ravi, you know? Everybody thinks he'll try to keep his promise, Juan. He sure isn't anybody to be afraid of. Afraid? <laughs> Senor Jess, I have yet to meet the hombre I be afraid of. <laughs> yeah, practically every lawman in the territory is afraid to tackle Juan Revilla. It's funny to think of that sheriff's son affixing to come after you. It will not be so funny for him, Senor Sparky. The people in Red Bank must learn a lesson, no? What do you mean? Killing the sheriff has not been enough. We shall show them once and for all that we mean business. How are you going to do that, Juan? In the morning, we shall again ride into town. I shall put a bullet in the young hombre who has made the promise. Then they may put him to rest with his father. The Lone Ranger and Tonto picked up the trail of Juan Revilla and his men in town and followed it for some distance. Finally, they lost the trail in a stream. It was some time before they were able to pick it up again. When they were certain they had found it, they stopped for a moment. What's going on? How do I'm sure I'll be able to follow the trail from here? Uh, I'll take my time so that you'll have a chance to go back to town and bring Jack and his posse. Uh, we take shortcut to town, bring posse to this place, and we pick up your trail. I'll leave a clear trail. Get them here as soon as possible. All right, not take long. Adios, Kimisabi. Adios. Get them up, scout. Come on, sir. Though the moon was bright, the Lone Ranger took quite some time in following the trail from the stream. After passing some big boulders off to one side, the masked man reached a point from which he could see into the hollow. He pulled to a halt momentarily. Oh, oh, oh. Steady now. Since the slight breeze was blowing from the trail toward the big boulders, the great horse Silver hadn't caught the scent that would have caused him to warn his master. Consequently, the Lone Ranger was unprepared for what immediately happened. A voice called out from behind the boulders. Got you covered. Better make quicker, we'll drill you. Oh, two of them. I'm reaching. Get up there. Oh, 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 oh. Well, what do you know? A masked owl host. Yeah, reckon Juan will be glad to meet him. Well, maybe we should plug him and be done with it. The two outlaws had pulled to a stop alongside the masked man, one on each side. The Lone Ranger realized he must act quickly. With his knees, he passed a signal to the intelligent stallion Silver. The Lone Ranger felt the great horse tense in readiness. Then the masked man suddenly called out. No, Silver! Silver immediately reared and whirled. His sudden action frightened the two outlaws' horses so that they bolted. Hey, look out! Hold! Hold! One of the outlaws fell from his saddle, striking his head on a rock. When the other gained control of his horse and swung around, he found himself facing the Lone Ranger's guns. Oh, hold there! Stop your gun and reach! Oh, you, you tricked us! I've dropped my gun. Did you said the big fella. I'll take that gun. Now, get off your horse. Hurry. What are you going to do? You and your partner are ready to kill me. I'll be more lenient with you. Your friend seems to have been knocked out. Now, this will take care of you. After knocking out the remaining outlaw, the Lone Ranger quickly tied and gagged both of them and put them behind the boulders. Leaving Silver and the other two horses ground hitched in a nearby grove, he cautiously made his way on foot toward the shack. In the shack, Juan Revilla was passing the time in a card game with his other two men, Jess and Sparky. Finally, he set the cards aside and spoke. Uh, enough of this card game, senors. It is time for one of you to relieve one of the others who's guarding the trail. Uh, I'll do it, Juan. In fact, I'll tell both of them to come back. No need for two, as far as I can see. Perhaps you're right, Jess. Uh, the moon sure is bright tonight. The outlaw Jess stood in the doorway a moment. Then, instead of saying more or leaving... He closed the door and walked back to the table. Why have you not gone, amigo? Quiet. Keep your voices down. What's eating you? The moonlight has come from behind the shack. 
I opened the door just now, saw a man's shadow on the ground. He seems to be standing just around the corner of the shack. Maybe we'd better go out. No, Sparky. That would be risky. I'll continue to sit where I am, facing the door. You stay on your chair, Sparky. All right. You, Jess, walk to the side and sit on the edge of the bunk. We'll have our guns ready. If he comes in, he'll get a surprise. He might pick us off through the window. If he intended to do that, he's already had the chance. Now act natural and be ready. Outside, the Lone Ranger had seen the three men in the shack just before Jess had started out. The masked man had moved forward alongside the building with the intention of reaching the front door when he heard the door open. He flattened himself against the side of the shack and waited tensely. He heard Jess remark about the moonlight and then close the door. The masked man moved forward. The Lone Ranger went carefully up the porch steps, testing each board. Finally, he stood before the front door. Drawing both guns, he raised one foot, then brought his boot crashing heavily against the latch, and the door swung inward with a bang. Reach, all of you! Don't shoot, senor. Three guns cover you. The Lone Ranger immediately saw that Juan spoke the truth. Juan and Sparky at the table before him held guns, and Jess off to the side on a bunk covered him. The situation was tense. For a quiet moment, no one spoke or moved. The masked man realized he'd been expected, that he had walked into a trap. Though with quick shooting he might get one or even two of the men, he knew he had no chance to get all three without taking a bullet himself. Juan Revia broke the tense silence. We could have killed you as you came in, senor. Then why didn't you? I might have come in shooting. You could have shot us through the window without risk to yourself. I knew if you came in, you'd hold your fire. Make him drop his guns, Juan. And we'll unmask him and find out who he is. I know who this masked sombre is. Once I saw him in action in Arizona when he broke up a gang I had joined. He rides with the law. Mask lawman? See, si, Senor Jess. Have you not heard of the Lone Ranger? Holy smoke, I have. Yes, yeah, so have I. Drop your guns, Senor. I shall give you the count of three. If you do not drop them, we shall all shoot at once. The Lone Ranger tensed, but continued to hold his guns. One. He knew the three outlaws were experienced gunmen, and that at least one of their bullets would find its mark. Yet he stood firm. Who? The masked man knew that even though he did drop his guns, Juan Revia meant to kill him, and he decided to go down fighting. He saw Sparky wet his lips nervously as they waited for the fatal third count. But as Juan's mouth opened to give the count, it happened. Oh, get up, I'm shot. The window, look out. As Juan fell wounded, the outlaw Sparky instinctively dropped to the floor and faced the window. Taking advantage of the sudden interruption, the Lone Ranger, with split-second timing, whirled to face the outlaw off to the side. He sidestepped and fired just as Jess squeezed the trigger. The outlaw Jess dropped his gun as he grabbed his wounded wrist. Disregarding the bullet hole which had appeared in the brim of his hat, the masked man sprang forward as Jess, in spite of his wound, reached to pick up his gun. I'll take that gun. I'll get him, Jess. You not shoot. Thanks, Toto. You all right, Kimisabi? Yes. Those shots through the window were just in time. Me not shoot through window. Sheriff's son shoot. Good for him. He must have overcome his dislike for shooting at men. I'm glad we got here in time, mister. And I looked in the window and saw what was about to happen. I knew then that Dad was right when he said lots of humans are far worse than crawling animals. But like you, I didn't shoot to kill. I think you'll fill your father's shoes well, Jack. That one over there is Juan Revere. Man alive, I never thought we'd catch a ravine in this man. I thought there'd be more than three. You'll find two more tied and gagged behind the boulders back along the trail. Let's get them back to town, men, and have their wounds tended to soon as possible. Uh, he's going to hang anyhow. Why the hurry? I agree with Jack. We've done our duty. Now we'll get him to a doctor and let the law take its course. All right, let's get going, men. Later, after the outlaws had been doctored and put in jail, Jack, with a lone ranger, Toto, and a deputy, rode to his mother's home. Oh, 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 easy, 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 brother. Jack! Oh, Jack, I've been so worried. Ah, there's nothing to worry oh, about, Mom. That man, he's wearing a mask. <laughs> Is he one of the... No, he's not an outlaw. He's a friend of mine. Oh. And he was a friend of Dad's, too. Jack makes a fine lawman, Mrs. Pender. 
His father would be proud of him. Yeah, Jack. Oh, dear, I'm afraid if you go hunting that awful outlaw gang... We did go, Mom. And we caught the lot of them, including one Revere. You you mean it's all over? Yep, they're in jail. And in mighty bad shape, too. Oh, thank heaven. Now that you've kept your promise, son, you'll be able to turn in that badge and, and let someone else take over. But... All the men say they want Jack to continue as sheriff, Mrs. Pender. I think that's a fine idea. What do you say, Jack? Well, I... You not only did your duty and did it well, but you brought in Juan Revere without killing him. You saved my life when you wounded him through that window. I knew it had to be done. That's just it, Jack. It has to be done. And such things will always have to be done. As long as men like Revere roam the far west. I think you make a first-rate sheriff, Jack. Well... Thanks, I... I'll do my best, sir. Well, that's the way your father wanted it, so I guess it'll have to be. I'm sure Jack can take care of himself, Mrs. Pender. Well, Tonto and I must leave now. We're taking the trail to Austin. I know you didn't want to be sheriff, Jack, but now that you are, I'm sure we'll always be proud of you. Come along, Tonto. Adios. Adios, 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 sir. If he hadn't come along, I don't know how things would have turned out. Well, it was lucky for all of us if he did show up, Jack. To prove that we have another good sheriff in Red Bank. My boy, a sheriff, just like his father before him. Well, maybe I'll worry a lot, son, but I must say I'm proud of you, too. Thanks, Mom. Tell me, son, about that masked man. Just who is he? He's a man who sure knows human nature, Mom. Believe me, he straightened me out in a big hurry. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>